Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on the determination of longitude. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson. We've talked about the determination of latitude, and that is how far north or south of the equator you are, but the ability to determine longitude has been a far more difficult problem. Even the ancient Greeks and other ancient civilizations could determine their latitude, how far north or south they were, but determining how far east or west of a certain line, and as we've already discussed, the line that you're going to be east or west of is rather arbitrary, but even once you've established that line, determining how far east or west of that line you are has been rather difficult. The determination of longitude in a historical perspective, although it has been very difficult, there have been theoretical ways to determine longitude uh, for a while, but they have been thought to be very practically impossible or at least very difficult, and often thought to be dependent upon astronomy. Uh, lots of people, when I ask this question in class, how are you going to determine your longitude, how are you going to determine your position, they reach immediately to stars. Well, maybe if we tracked the stars and understood stellar positions uh, well enough, we would be able to do celestial measurements and therefore determine our longitude. Well, as a theoretical matter, there are a couple of different ways that we could do this. Uh, one of them is through a star position. As it happens, uh, the way that many people thought that this problem of longitude, the problem of determining your position east or west of a certain line, would be solved through astronomy. Now, whereas the, even the ancient Greeks were able to determine latitude, it was not well into the age of ships and the age of sailing uh, that people were able to solve this problem of longitude. And it was very much a problem because ships were getting lost there were a series of naval disasters that occurred uh, at the time of the British Empire and this, uh, the age of wooden sh sailing ships uh, that were having a tremendous problem, tremendous navigational problems because of their inability to determine their longitude. And actually, eventually, the British Admiralty put out a prize, sort of the equivalent of today's X Prize. You know, the X Prize uh, today is the prize that uh, got a private mission to space, and they do all kinds of uh, uh, prizes like that. Well, at the time, the main scientific prize was for somebody to determine a, a practical way of determining longitude well at sea. There were multiple attempts to do this based on astronomy. Now, you may be familiar with Greenwich, England. Now, Greenwich is the place where the prime meridian passes through. So, whereas in ancient civilizations they have changed what line of longitude they considered zero, we've standardized that now so that it goes through the, uh, the Greenwich, England, and we call that the prime meridian. Well, why did we settle on the prime meridian? Well, it's because there is an observatory, an astronomical observatory in Greenwich, England, that was specifically established by the British Empire to take astronomical celestial measurements and observations, and by cataloging all of this and cataloging all of the star positions, they hope to be able to come up with a way to determine uh, longitude. Now, actually, as a theoretical matter, it is possible to do it that way. It's very cumbersome. It's very time-consuming. It requires the calculation of star positions for every day of the year, every night of the year. It requires a tremendous number of almanacs to be published that, uh, calc that, that, that determine all of these star positions, and it's going to require a captain to do some very sophisticated calculations uh, based on the star positions that he is observing at night and then comparing to all these calculations. So in a theoretical way, yes, it can be done this way, but it's exceedingly complex. There was another way that had been theoretically known for a while, which was the relationship between longitude and time. And I want to look at this in more detail uh, right now. So there happens to be a relationship between longitude and time. So if you think about the Earth rotating on its axis, the Earth will rotate at a rate of one whole rotation every 24 hours. So if you think about how much does the Earth rotate in a single hour? What is the rate of the Earth's rotation? Well, it's very easy to calculate. 360 degrees are in a circle. 
right? It's got to rotate all the way around. That's 360 degrees. 360 degrees divided by 24 hours is equal to 15 degrees per hour. So if someone asks you how fast does the Earth rotate, well, it rotates 15 degrees per hour. 15 degrees of longitude. So this relationship between longitude and time has been known for a while. Uh, even, I believe, some Greeks knew about this, but the problem was the fact of getting this practically implemented. How do you practically implement this? And this is very, uh, very difficult because it depends on very precise timekeeping. You have to be able to keep time very precisely. And even as late as Isaac Newton, Isaac Newton uh, pondered over this problem of determining longitude as well. And basically, he came to the conclusion that we were not going to ever be technologically sophisticated enough to produce timekeeping pieces, to produce clocks that are accurate enough to be used in the determination of longitude. So they did have this knowledge of a theoretical way to compute longitude, uh, but no practical way to do that. So when the British Admiralty established this prize to determine longitude for the use of the British Navy, they expected it to be won by an astronomer. There's got to be some uh, astronomer who can determine a much faster, a much easier way for us to determine our longitude other than making these extremely complex calculations and producing these years of almanacs and so forth. Well, little did they know that the prize would actually be won by a clockmaker. He actually solved the technological problems of creating a timepiece that is capable of keeping time accurately enough in order to implement this theoretical way through time of calculating longitude. What was developed was a chronometer. You've probably heard this term before, chronometer. Well, what is a chronometer technically? Uh, it is a timekeeping piece that is accurate enough for you to be able to perform these calculations for the determination of your longitude. The clockmaker who figured this out was John Harrison, and John Harrison wasn't able to solve the problem of longitude until late into the 18th century. So there's a big discrepancy in the amount of time we've been able to find latitude and the amount of time that we've been able to find longitude. So John Harrison basically dedicated his whole life to the development of a clock, of a marine chronometer that would be accurate enough for captains in the British Navy to be able to determine their longitude. Uh, when he came up with his solution, he submitted it to the Admiralty to win his prize. Uh, in today's currency, he would have won about $4.25 million for his solution. But because the British Admiralty were sort of so caught up on the thought that this would be won by an astronomer, it actually took him uh, many years, I think a decade or more, uh, to be awarded his prize money for this. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at the way that he was able to determine longitude through the use of a marine chronometer.